Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of In the Parking in the School Parking Lot. My name is Paul Everts, I'm your host. You can reach me on my email address, and I wish you would. It's B-A-N-D, the number two together, band together, comcast.net. Also, we have a website which is conductingmylife.com, which you can see that beautiful book. Uh, I've written a book called Conducting My Life, Life Lessons from a High School Music Teacher. Check it out on Amazon. It's gotten some pretty cool reviews. Got one little negative one, but yeah, whatever. Um, let me do a disclaimer real fast. Last week I mentioned it, and I'm going to mention it again this week. I'm going to leave the comment section on because I heard that it helps spread this out to further people. helps the algorithm, I guess that's what it's called. Because again, I'm a neophyte at this stuff. It means new. I have students, scholars, who are subscribers. To my students and scholars who are subscribers, first of all, I'm very touched that you would do that. That helps your teacher out a lot. Secondly, get ready for some really nasty, mean comments. Because what your teacher's talking about right now is not in the public schools, and they don't want it to be in the public schools. And, however, everyone's entitled to an opinion. And uh, your, your teacher's just sharing news articles. Okay? So get ready for that. And again, go ahead and make comments. I'm, I'm okay. I'll live. Press the like button, subscribe, share this with people. Let's get the word out. We need school choice to be back. Real school choice. Okay, here we go. Episode 11, May 18th, 2024. Middle schoolers study in fear after being forced back to class with troubled trans kid who named 45 on hit list. Boston parent says... They know the school is not protecting them. From Watertown, Massachusetts. In an unbelievable story out of Boston suburb, a whistleblower has come forward and reports that a troubled trans student was allowed to return to school despite writing a hit list that named 45 students, the Daily Mail reports. The parent of a child who attends Watertown Middle School told the Daily Mail that students at the school are in fear for their life after the gender-confused student wrote out the hit list. Students are in fear for their lives, the parent who chose to remain anonymous said. The whistleblower also said that school officials have imposed a gag order of sorts on parents and are silencing any criticism of the trans student. Who attends seventh, seventh, seventh grade... Parents fear that if they will talk about their concerns in school safety in general, they will be accused of being transphobic. The kid with a 40 plus person hit list who has faced minimal consequences and been favored at every turn obviously has a lot of anger and who knows what they will do, the parent told Daily Mail. Students on the hit list have prepared to fight for their lives if they need to. They know the school is not protecting them. Watertown School Superintendent Deanne Galston facilitated a re-entry process to return the clearly disturbed student to class. Instead of expressing concern for the students whose lives were threatened, Officials have instead come down on the side of the student who wrote the hit list. They spoke of the need to address anti-trans and other biased behavior in the school and to have empathy for the creator of the hit list. They also want to create an affinity space for LGBTQIA plus families. Such progressive nonsense has inflamed some parents, including the whistleblower. Parents are scared, worn down, and disgusted. So many have had their trust in Watertown schools shattered, they told the Daily Mail. It's horrible to learn that your child has been put on a hit list by another student, but to then have your concerns ignored. Have administrators deceive the greater community and have the needs of the perpet uh, perpetrator be so blatantly put over the needs of the victims takes things to a whole other level that is overwhelming. 
you read the rest of the article. I've got the uh, link down below for you. I would encourage you to do that. We live in bizarre times, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm shocked that because the student is trans, they get treated differently than the victims do in the sense that he's getting help, but the victims aren't. Or the help they're getting is that they're homo phobic, transphobic, some phobic because they're scared that he's going to hurt them even though he created a hit list. Okay, all right. Go ahead, read the rest of that article. Okay, we're going to finish this chapter. It's called Child Abuse, Turning Normal Children into Dyslexics. Great book. We are working our way through the book. Um, we got, Why didn't the progressive educators admit that their teaching methods were creating dyslexia and go back to the traditional phonics or phonics method. Because what they had done to the Rockefeller boys in a private school, they intended to do to the rest of American children in public schools. The tragedy is that there are millions of Americans like the Rockefeller boys who must endure the crippling consequences of educational malpractice. The fact that the progressives refused to stop what they were doing indicates that they intent that their intent was criminal. Indeed, they were politely but em emphatically warned in February 1929, 1929, one more time, 1929, by Dr. Samuel T. Orton, a neuropathologist in 1929, February of 1929, in an article in the Journal of Educational Psychology titled the sight reading method of teaching reading as a source of reading disability. Dr. Orton couldn't have been more critical of the new method, a teaching method, again, 1929, 1929. He wrote the following. I wish to emphasize at the beginning that the strictures, it says strictures that I have to offer here do not apply to the use of the sight method of teaching reading as a whole but only to its effects on a restricted group of children for whom, as I think we can show, this technique is not only not adapted, but often proves an actual obstacle to reading progress. And moreover, I believe that this group is one of the considerable educational importance because of its size and because here faulty teaching methods may not only prevent the acquisition of academic education for children of average capacity, but may also give rise to far-reaching damage to their emotional life. So says Dr. Orton in February 1929. Early as 1929, the educators had had explicit warning from a prominent physician that the new whole word method could cause serious reading disability. And they certainly must have known about the Gallaudet or Gallaudet, G-A-L-L-A-U-D-E-T, experiment in Boston in the 1830s and 40s. Despite this, the new Basil, B-A-S-A-L, Basil reading programs with their delightful illustrations turned out to be huge commercial successes for the publishers as, virtually overnight, whole dis school districts switched to Dick and Jane, Alice and Jerry, Jer Janet and Mark, Jimmy and Sue, Tom and Betty, and other whole word basil series that were making their professor authors rich. By the way, no one seems to know why, in the midst of the Great Depression, American schools suddenly decided to spend millions of dollars on a new experimental teaching method that had not yet to prove its efficacy. And it goes on from there. Let me read the last two paragraphs and then we're done today. Uh, what Professor Ottinger, O-E-T-T-I-N-G-R, what Professor Ottinger chooses to forget is that literacy was high in early America because of the need to be able to read what book? Yeah, the Bible. And know what? The Word of God. Yeah, correct. To our forefathers, the purpose of education was to pass on to the next generation the knowledge, the wisdom, and the values of pre previous generations. To them, man was made in God's image, 
And therefore, children had to be educated with that concept in mind. We don't know of any parent who sends a child to school not to learn to read, write, and do arithmetic. Yet, a member of the Harvard elite is telling us that these are things not all children have to learn and that the dumbing down curriculum is just fine. The establishment does not think your kids should even be able to read. What would make anyone think that its members care whether the methods being used can cause dyslexia in children? Wow. Okay, that chapter five is done. Here's the next chapter. Cite vocabulary, the poison of primary education. There you go. Please subscribe, share, press the like button, help the algorithm, get this message out. I love you. I appreciate your time. I hope this is helping you. Education is at a critical crossroads and we're seeing how it does impact our society. Just look at the college campuses. Okay, again, I love you. God bless.